Hello again and welcome to my garage for part four of my beginner's guide to motorcycle electrics. And today we're going to talk about the ignition system. And so once again, with no expense spent, I've drawn out a very simple diagram of your typical modern ignition system. Now, I'm not going to cover points ignition because most motorcycles made in the last 30 or 40 years don't use points. And if you own a motorcycle with points, then I think you need to know a bit more than my beginner's guide to electrics. So let's begin then. We'll start at the very end of the process, which is here on the spark plug. And the purpose of the spark plug, as its name suggests, is to create a spark inside the cylinder head of the engine, which will ignite the fuel-air mixture inside the cylinder and so that explodes and forces the piston down the cylinder and gives the power of the engine so that's pretty straightforward but we'll come back to the spark plug later on because it's not as simple as it first appears then we've got here a spark plug cap which fits over the end of the spark plug and transfers the electrical charge to the spark plug from here the coil and the coil is linked to spark plug via the ignition lead here these are quite thick so if you've got a four cylinder motorbike you'll have four of these and probably two coils now when it comes to coils oftentimes what you have is what's called a lost spark ignition system so if you have a four cylinder engine you have four spark plugs but normally you don't have four coils you only have two because they share uh, a coil drives or powers two spark plugs it's called a lost spark ignition because at any one time one of those sparks sparks and nothing happens in the engine because in that particular cylinder there's no fuel air mixture to ignite so that's why it's called a lost spark ignition but let's keep it simple and let's imagine we've got a single cylinder motorbike one spark plug one plug cap one lead and one coil so what does a coil do? Well, a coil transfers or converts your 12 volt power, your 12 volt current from the battery into something a lot, lot more powerful. It converts from 12 volts up to something like 20 or 25 or even 45,000 volts. Now, how it does that will come to later on. You just have to know that's its job. It converts the 12 volt power from the battery into something much, much more powerful. And if you've ever grabbed hold of a spark plug when it's uh, igniting, you'll know it gives you one hell of a jolt. And that's because although the amperage is quite small, the voltage is in the tens of thousands. Right, so to power the coil, we need to have power from the battery. So we have a lead from the positive side of the battery into the coil. That's all fairly simple. But, we need to tell the spark plug the precise moment to make the spark, to ignite the fuel air mixture inside the engine. And that's not so simple because the engine's spinning around awfully fast, up to 10, 20,000 revs. So yeah, that's not easy at all. And so then the coil has a second wire going to it, which is coming from this thing here, this little square box, which I have labeled the ECU. Sometimes it's called the igniter, or sometimes it's just called an ignition box. So, depending on the edge of your bike, it could be any of those things. But essentially, it's like a electronic box which tells the coil when to ignite, or when to create a spark, to ignite the fuel-air mixture inside your engine, because that's quite critical. You don't want this thing sparking away when it shouldn't do. That would cause all kinds of problems. So how does the... ECU or igniter box know when it's the appropriate time to cause a spark at the spark plug. Well, it knows it because there's a trigger over here which is usually found on the end of your crankshaft. And what happens is this trigger is monitoring the position and speed of the crankshaft. So it knows how fast it's spinning around and it knows where it is in its rotation. And it does so by using either magnets and a sensor, or even sometimes some kind of visual system using a light, maybe even even a laser light. But it all depends on the particular bike that you've got. So, that's the basic system. All pretty simple, or so you would imagine. So let's go back to the humble spark plug and talk about that. So the spark plug is really made up out of three components. First of all, you've got this long, thin, bar here which is made from some 
superconductive material. You've then got a insulator around it, which is, off, which is often a ceramic. That's the bit you can see sticking out of your engine. So on this spark plug here, it's kind of like a slightly yellow color here at the top. And then we've got the third component is the bit that you screw into your engine. It's got a thread on it. It's got a sort of some sort of hex on it to let you screw it in. And attached to that is this part of the spark plug here which is at the very tip. There it is there. And there's also a gap between this tip and this long rod, which is going through the center of the spark plug. And what happens is, there's so much voltage going through this conductive rod that it has to, at the appropriate time, it will cause a spark to cross this gap here. There's so much voltage that you know it can jump across this small gap and by doing so it creates a spark so that's what makes the spark which ignites your fuel air mixture inside your engine so as i say to do that you've got to have an awful lot of voltage going through this rod and that voltage is up to oh, 45,000 volts or typically between 20 and 25,000 volts which is a huge amount of voltage considering you've only got 12 volts at your battery so, how does it do it? Well, it does it because the coil converts 12 volts into 45,000 volts. So, I'm sure on YouTube there are lots of really cool videos to tell you how it works. But essentially, inside here you've got a primary and secondary coil of wire. So, you've got like a primary coil and a secondary coil. Da -da 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 -da. And the ratio between the number of coils between the primary and secondary governs how much the voltage is increased by. So, obviously, we're going from 12 to 45,000. There's a huge amount of difference between the primary and secondary coils. That works because when power is applied to the coil, a electromagnetic field is created around it, sort of like this. Da, 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 da. I'm sure you all know about magnetism and all that kind of stuff. And that's one reason why you don't want to put sensitive electronic components close to your coils because these things are emitting a very powerful electromagnetic field. Now, when the power is cut off, even for a moment, that electromagnetic field collapses back inside, if you like, back inside the coil. And by doing so, it induces a current in the secondary coil, which is at 45,000 volts, which then travels down the ignition lead through the central rod of the spark plug, which then jumps across this gap before finally being earthed back to this third component. Because the third component, of course, is screwed into your engine and your engine is fastened to your frame and the frame is linked to your battery, so that's the way it gets earthed. So that's the way things work. Now, what's really important to know is that the spark doesn't happen when the coil has power to it. It only happens when the, coil, the coil's power is cut. So when you cut the, the power, that's when the induced current occurs and the voltage travels down and you get a spark at the end of your spark plug. So that's a sort of vital bit of information there. So to cut that power just at the right time, that's what the ECU is doing and that's what this trigger is trying to work out. The trigger knows the speed of revolutions of the crankshaft and it knows where it is within its revolution of 360 degrees. That information is passed to the igniter box stroke ECU, whatever you want to call it, and that ECU box calculates when to cut the power to the coil, which will then cause the spark plug to create a spark across its end. So yeah, all pretty straightforward, or not as the case may be. So that's all, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But we also have to remember that as the engine revs up, the spark plug has got less time to ignite the fuel air mixture inside the cylinder and force, force the uh, piston down. And that's where we get the terms advanced and retard the ignition from. Because the ECU knows 
the speed at which the engine is revving, the speed at which the crankshaft is spinning around, and from that it can calculate the appropriate advance or retard we need to spark the spark plug at just the right moment to ignite the fuel mixture perfectly, despite the fact that the speed is changing up and down as you rev your engine. And that leads me on to talk about advance and retard. What that means is that we are advancing or retarding the moment the spark occurs at the spark plug depending on the speed at which the engine is revving. Because at slow revs you would normally expect as the piston, let's just uh, draw a piston here, I'll draw a cylinder, there we go and a piston's there, look, piston's there with a conrod. So as that's going up you'd expect that the spark would occur when it reaches the very top of its stroke, it's called top dead center. That way the fuel air mixture will explode just as it reaches the top and force the piston back down the cylinder to maximum effect for maximum power. However, however, as the revs increase, this is going up and down really, really quickly. I mean, like 10,000 RPM. So if you ignite the spark plug as it reaches top dead center, that's too late because it's already halfway down the cylinder by the time the fuel air mixture has fully exploded, if you like, fully ignited and created the power to push it back down, push, push the uh, piston back down the cylinder. So what we do is we advance ignition, which means that the spark occurs before the piston reaches its top dead center at the top of its stroke uh, in the engine. That gives the fuel air mixture time to explode and fully uh, force the piston down just as it reaches its true top dead center. And that changes depending on obviously the speed the engine revving. So a modern system, a modern ECU is reading the speed of the engine constantly and changing the advance or retard of the spark to give you the perfect ignition if you like, to give you the perfect um, explosion at the perfect time to give you maximum power to force this piston back down the uh, cylinder. Yes, that's the reason why. And so moving on then to what goes wrong with this system. So we'll start off with the spark plug, the humble spark plug. And the first thing I'll say is they don't last forever. You've got to change them occasionally because these live in quite a harsh environment and they do wear out. This little gap here is carrying up to 45,000 volts and it wears, it wears out. So if you are having problems starting your bike perhaps or it's not running too well and you think it's something to do with ignition, your first part of call is changing the spark plugs before you do anything else. That's the easiest and cheapest option so go for that first and hopefully it'll solve you know quite a lot of issues you might have with your bike now these can fail because the ceramic coating on the outside of this rod can crack and fail similarly the plug cap can crack and fail and you can have problems with your high tension ignition lead often called a HT lead because the insulation can fail, can crack, you know, all kinds of things can happen. Motorbikes are quite a difficult environment for these parts because they get hot, they get cold, they vibrate and they get wet. Not an ideal environment for delicate ele uh, electronics. So what happens there is if you do get a failure, this big high voltage doesn't go to the end of the spark plug and cause a spark. No, it leaks out somewhere else. In fact, I've had a motorbike once where in the rain you could look down and see it tracking. You could see a sort of sparks going along these, this area here. Not ideal, so that had to be sorted out. One problem you might have is you've got an older bike. The, high, the, the uh, HT lead is actually part of the coil. So if that's got a problem, then you've really got to change the whole thing. You've got to change your coil and the HT lead. In the same way, the coil can fail. Inside the coil you've got the secondary and primary coils but the coil itself is just a big plastic barrel if you like a big drum and that can crack you can have problems again harsh environment for, for these parts over time you can get cracks and problems and again that can cause the spark not to happen where it should at the end of the spark plug similarly as usual with a motorbike you get all these connections can fail they can corrode vibrate off insulation can fail and so on so if you do have a problem you've got to check all of these as well 
Finally, the so-called ECU stroke, igniter stroke, ignition box. If that fails, you've really got no choice but to replace it. They usually got a little chip inside, and if they fail, then that's that. You can't really repair it. The trigger can also fail, although not, not that common. These days they're usually magnetic or they have some sort of photo sensor. So they're inside the engine, nice and keeping nice and clean and free of muck and dirt, and they usually work quite well. And so there's my beginner's guide to the ignition system of a typical modern motorcycle. Now, if you've got any questions about what we've gone through now, just put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them whenever I can. So that's part four done. I'm not quite sure what I'll do for part five. I'm sort of running out of ideas for the electrical systems on a motorbike. If you have any questions about different aspects I've not covered yet, then please just put it in the comment below and let me know. And so for now then, thanks for watching and cheers.